Hello, everybody. This is the lesson for Tuesday, May 4th. May the 4th be with you. All right. Now I'm going to get ready here. I got my Geek Master 3000 clipboard with all of this stuff. And I got the notes for the day and a surprise guest appearance. Hi, COVID kids. Okay. So here we go. So um, if you're gone, which obviously is why you're watching my lovely video, okay, I've got third hour running this on this row, fourth hour running on this row, fifth hour running on this row, and sixth hour running on this row. And we're keeping track of the weather every hour at the beginning of the hour. And I did not give this sheet ahead of time because this is it's too much to explain. Okay. This is going to be your final project. It's going to be worth 150 points because it's 10 points of data every day for several weeks. Okay. So this is third hour. Kids would copy down that box if they're home, non-COVID kids, and they already have this sheet with them. Okay. If you don't have your sheet at home with you, then don't worry about it. You can get it when you come back. Notice there's a high up in North Dakota, Montana, okay, and the lows, there. that's like Arkansas and Michigan, okay. Um, they're talking about bad weather that's happening today and tonight in Tennessee, that low, it may kill somebody. They're, they're warning people about bad tornadoes in Tennessee, Texas, and Western North Carolina, okay. Here is what the weather was like fourth hour. That's a 44 right there and a 32. Now notice the weather changed. It warmed up. The wind picked up a little bit. The pressure dropped a little bit. That's a 30 and a 38. Um, here's, that was fifth hour. Here's sixth hour. The sky has got much clearer. Notice it was how cloudy it was. Third hour. Look at that. Fourth hour is clearing up. Fifth hour, it was less. There was a few clouds, but it was less than 10%. And then sixth hour, it was 10%. Okay? Now, and I the, the, the high shifted a little bit to the south. Okay, we're going to talk about highs and lows today. They're very important. All right, I'm going to move this huge clipboard. If you pick up your notes where we left off yesterday, what, I'm going to put this up on the thing. We ended yesterday with this drawing of the three little trees being blown by the wind. Okay, Wind is moving air caused by differences in temperature and air pressure. All right. So the first thing we did in the notes today was we added this very important thing. We put three stars by it on the front and the three stars at the end. Wind blows from highs to lows. And I wrote highs in blue and lows in red. Okay? Wind is pushed away from a high and toward a low. That's what this drawing is telling you. This little memory rhyme helps too. Wind blows from highs to lows. Now, what I gave them next was an example of two different kinds of local wind. Okay? We name winds for the direction they come from. Okay? We name winds for the directions they come from. Okay, so in this drawing up in the mountains, the sun is out and it warms up the rocks, the sun beating on the rocks, and the air touched by those warm rocks warms up and rises, comes up and out of the valley. We call that a valley breeze. Okay, because the air is coming out of the valley going up the mountains. In the evening and at nighttime, the cold air sinks down the valley and we name, we name breezes from where they come from. This is called a mountain breeze because it's coming down off the mountain. It's coming from the mountain down to the valley. That's called a mountain breeze. Okay? That's one kind of local wind. It happens every day in the mountains. Even if there's no other wind happening, there will be gentle upward wind in the daytime and gentle downward wind in the nighttime. Okay? This happens at the beach. The land warms up much more quickly than the water. Okay, this is, this is hot air rising up off the beach. And the air to replace it comes off the cold water. Okay, it's called a sea breeze. 
It's really, really warm on the sand, but that beautiful breeze coming off the cool water feels so good. Okay? And I drew a sailboard there being blown into shore by the sea breeze. Because we name it from where it's coming from, from the ocean. In the evening, in the nighttime, it switches. The land cools more quickly, too. And now the w warmer air is over the water. And the air to replace this rising air comes off the land. That's called a land breeze. And it would be blowing a sailboard out to sea. There's a shark following. Okay. All right. So that was that's part of the notes. And then get ready for a ton of arrows. Okay. People were like, too many arrows. All right. Then we talk about the Coriolis effect. This is what makes storms happen. It's the spin of storms caused by Earth's spin. If we didn't have spin, we wouldn't have storms. Okay? If you think, oh, let's just stop the world from spinning. Well, then you're going to kill everybody because then one side of the Earth facing the sun get hotter and hotter, and the side facing away from the sun get colder and colder. To, to save a few people from storms, you killed everybody. With No thank you. Okay? All right. So, you live in the Northern Hemisphere. So we drew this. There's a lot of arrows. Here's a northern hemisphere high. Here's a northern hemisphere low. Highs push air away from them. Lows suck air in toward them. Now, what's with all the other arrows? The Coriolis effect, the spinning of the earth, causes everything in the northern hemisphere to turn to its right. So watch. Out and to the right. 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 It makes this happen. The air around good weather spins, spins clockwise, CW. The air around good weather, high pressure, in the northern hemisphere spins clockwise. Now, here's what happens in stormy weather. Air is being sucked in by low pressure like a vacuum cleaner, deflected to its right, deflected inward into its right, inward to its right, inward to its right. That's counterclockwise, CCW, counterclockwise. Tornadoes, 99% of the tornadoes we have in North, the Northern Hemisphere are counterclockwise. There are really, really weak clockwise tornadoes basically unwinding themselves. They have a hard time doing anything. Okay, Southern Hemisphere is the opposite. High pressure pushes stuff away from it, but it's all deflected to its left. Out and to the left, out and to the left. Out to the left, out to the left. That's counterclockwise. Okay? And here, a north, southern hemisphere low, sucking stuff in still, but deflected to its left, in and to its left, in and to its left, in and to its left. That makes counter, sorry, that makes clockwise. This is clockwise. And you're like, oh, too many arrows. That's like 48 arrows. There's a lot of arrows there. Four words can make this make sense. Four words. Our highs are clockwise. Our highs are clockwise. Think about it. If our highs are clockwise, what are their highs? Well, counterclockwise. And if our highs are clockwise, what are our lows? Well, they'd be the opposite. So our highs are clockwise, which rhymes highs and clockwise. That means our lows are counterclockwise. If you can remember these four words, our highs are clockwise, all of these arrows make sense. All right, I'm going to hit stop. I've got it done in about 10 minutes, actually nine minutes. This will take about two hours to upload, and it'll be on my Google Classroom tonight around supper time.